Hello everybody, this is Gregory with The Cinema Rag. I hope you're doing well today. Today we're gonna to continue the series on Sexy Saturday and talk about Amanda Seyfried. Now before we begin, most of The Cinema Rag content is over at Apple or Spotify because it originally started as a podcast. So if you're wanting to listen to more in auditory form without the visual format, you're more than welcome to go over there. It'll take several months where I can get all the content over here. By the way, over there in the podcast, we do have an ongoing series on Sexy Saturday. It started in January of 2023, and by the time of September of 2023, I think I had done 40 episodes. Amanda Seyfried was, in fact, my number one. Is that necessarily I find her the most attractive? Because, spoiler alert, upcoming Sexy Saturdays would be like peak Eva Green, for example. It's just Amanda Seyfried is just one of those crushes that I've always had. And, and it's funny because the older I get, the crushes still stay the same age. So back in the 90s, I really liked Kate Winslet when she was younger. And then for a little while, I was kind of into like Rebecca Ferguson, who I still think is very attractive. She's a Sexy Saturday podcast. And now, you know, it was Seyfried for about 10 years, and now I've moved on to other women, which I'll have future Sexy Saturdays on. But Amanda Seyfried, to me, and again, the Sexy Saturday editions are not necessarily commenting on how good of an actor or actress they are. I'm not. It's just complete objectification of the woman. I'll be completely honest. So I have a type. And you'll see on this ongoing series what my type is. I think the first one that I moved over here was Naomi Watts. And I apologize because I put Amanda Seyfried pictures because I think on the original Garage Band audio, it was Amanda Seyfried and I forgot to save it and I recorded Naomi Watts over it. It's kind of like... When you like the old Everybody Loves Raymond episode where Ray records the Super Bowl over his uh, his wedding um, back when we had VHSs. It was kind of like that. So my apologies. Amanda Seyfried is supposed to be number one. But either way, why is Seyfried number one? Or why do I find her attractive? Well, I have a, I like the look of the virtue signaling ingenue. And especially when she was younger, she had that. I like that very kind of pale... Blonde to dirty blonde, but not platinum blonde hair, the colored eyes, and just very Botticelli face, cherubic face. And Seyfried, to me, has that. Now, she, later on, May and I, my co-host, we have top 10 most beautiful women. We, it's a two-part series that we did, I think, in July. Uh, it's probably going to take me at least two months to move that over here. So if you're curious about that, go listen to it on the podcast form. Seyfried's not in my top 10 most beautiful women in the last 40 years. I think her liability to me is that she is a little short. She's fun size. She's 5'2". But if you look at her face, I just I find her face to be quite alluring because she's got what May likes to call the bug, her eyes bug out a little. I don't think so. I think she's got these very large blue eyes and she just has the, a beautiful face, the high cheekbones and just a lovely face. She's originally born in Pennsylvania and she's 37, about to turn 38 in November. And she, in terms of her dating life, and we'll talk about her film, her retrospective in a second. Her dating life, she dated Dominic Cooper when she was doing Mamma Mia, and they were together for quite some time. And then she dated Justin Long, the goofy guy from Dodgeball, for a little while. And then she met Thomas Sadowski. He's probably most famous for being on television shows. And they met when they were doing a play, and uh, things got heated very fast. Because reputedly, both of them were in a relationship at the time. And if I'm not mistaken, Vic Sadowski was married. And after that, they both dumped their respective people and then they got together and uh, they've had two children. And if I'm not mistaken, I think if you look at the dates, the dates of the first baby was like, oh, this was maybe a whoops baby because I don't think they were married as of yet. But either way, they, they tend, and I could be wrong because okay, so this is the legend, but they tend for all intents and purposes seem to have a good relationship. I like it when kind of like uh, Fassbender and Alicia Vikander are kind of the same way too. Uh, they they don't live in Hollywood. So Vikander and Fassbender live in Portugal. And Seyfried and Sadowski, they live in upstate New York. They just live in a farm. And if you go to her Instagram, you'll just see mostly pictures. I mean, you'll see pictures of her posing, of course, but you'll see a lot of pictures from the farm. And I, I just kind of like that. I like couples or Hollywood people who don't live in Hollywood and who are not always courting uh, the paparazzi a la... You know, J-Lo, a la the Kardashian thoughts, a la Taylor Swift and all these people. So you probably first saw Seyfried in Mean Girls. And of course, in Mean Girls, like who would have thought out of McAdams and Lohan and, well, I guess Lacey Chabert was in Party 5, the TV show from the 90s, and Seyfried, like 
we name name two they're gonna have an academy award nomination and i think her portrayal of, of karen and again she's quite lovely in that and then she's 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 got the funny lines you know she thinks that her breasts tell her what the weather is and she says that she's got espn because she can read people's minds you know she's the stupid one out of the plastics but i think watching that you would never have thought wow she's going to end up being an academy award nominee and being in a fincher movie by the way from there uh, that's in 2005 she finds it, it takes her some time to get the big break she ends up on the hbo show big love which is you know rest in peace bo paxton it's game over man he's always immortalized to me as hudson from aliens which is a future episode here movies i love uh, that'll be the number the number two one after uh team america world police which we already have over here but uh, she plays one of the daughters of the polygamous family and then her big break is mama mia in 2008 she plays sophie the the daughter of meryl streep who's not well casted in that movie uh, that's a future movies I love, a sinful pleasure movies I love. Uh, we'll talk about it's more, more like Mamma Mia too. But she is the lead in Mamma Mia and that really catapults her to fame. And then she kind of goes, I guess I, what I would say is the Seyfried Imperial run or Royal run because she's in a lot of rom-coms. And at this point, she is in her early to mid 20s. So she's at her peak of her beauty. So some notable movies during that time is Letters to Juliet which takes place in Italy. I think out of all her movies, she looks the most lovely in this movie because she still has the cherubic face and just lovely long hair. And I think later in Seyfried's career, she kind of pulls Angelina Jolie where she looks, she ends up looking a little too gaunt. But I think early in her career when she's doing this, uh, she does a movie called Chloe, which where she plays a prostitute hired by Julianne Moore. And uh, she's married to Pierce Brosnan, Julianne Moore, and she suspects that Brosnan might be stepping out. So she hires Chloe, played by Seyfried, who's a prostitute, to seduce her husband, to see if her husband's seducible. It, the movie doesn't really work, even though it has a great cast, but I mean, she's, she's quite lovely in that movie. Red Riding Hood, she did this time. She did a, a Nicholas Sparks movie. I think it was Dear John, the one with Channing Tatum. She does during this time. So like in the early 20 teens, she's really hitting a big, Later, she does La Miserable, and oh, I forgot to mention Je Jennifer's Body. Jennifer's Body is she plays the nerd opposite Megan Fox, and that's in that that uh, that movie. That's it's it's a dark comedy. It's written by this uh, Diablo Di Diablo Cody wrote it, the one who wrote Juno. It's a dark movie, but then she gets another big break in La Miserable, and that's in 2011 or so, if I'm not mistaken. And La, La Miserable is is Hugh Jackman as. Uh, Jean Valjean and Russell Crowe <laughs> as the inspector they try to limit his singing but she plays Cassette who is the daughter of Hugh Jackman's character I, I'm sorry she's the daughter of Anne Hathaway's character who gets the Academy Award for that movie who should not have gotten the Academy Award for that movie but she is just ethereally beautiful in that movie and she's opposite Eddie Redman who is a, a future emperor has no clothes that guy is just not talented at all but that's another big break that she has. So she's doing a nice run now. Throughout her career, I would say she's she does a lot of little movies. And some of these little movies work. Like, I think First Reformed, which is Paul Schrager's work, the guy who did American Gigolo and a lot of other movies from the 80s, is a great movie. It's Ethan Hawke as a, as a I think he's like a Lutheran reverend. It, 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 it takes a dark turn, and not like in a sexual way, but she plays the widow of a man who takes his life. And the movie is very dark, but it's a great movie, and I think she's good in it. Uh, she does a bomb bag movie called While We Were Young, where she's opposite Adam Driver. They play a hipster couple, and uh, they befriend Ben Stiller and Naomi Watts, who are like the older couple who want to be hipsters. So that movie has a lot of observational comedy. And she's just in a, a lot of stuff that's not like big on the radar but is like keeping her career going and then she's in ted too she replaces mila kunis who was in the first ted and i i think again her i don't know if her comedy timing is that good i don't know if that's really her strength but eventually i think her like big big i wouldn't would say big break but later in her career she enters her 30s she starts getting more lauded for her actual acting instead of just being being pretty and being in rom-coms so for example she does mank Mank is the Fitcher movie that takes place in the 1920s where Gary Oldman plays a director and she plays Marion Davies, the 1920s actress. And this movie came out during COVID and she got a nominated for Academy Award. And you know, I, I talk about it with May quite a bit. Like I am not a big fan of the Academy Award giving 
awards for people that are impersonating others. I think there should be a separate category, best impersonation. So like when Austin Butler was Elvis or Gary Oldman was Winston Churchill or whatever it is. And I, it's just because you're not creating a character. You're just essentially ribbing off of an existing person. But she got nominated. She didn't win. And then she got a lot of love for the dropout. And if I'm not mistaken, I think she got an Emmy for the dropout. This is the Theranos Lady Elizabeth Holmes. She plays her. This was a Hulu show that came out, I think it was last year, if not 2021. And uh, she's quite good in it. And she did, she gets the voice down of, of Holmes really, really well. So she did that. And she got, like I mentioned, an Emmy for that. And then most recently, she's been on a new show that's called, uh, no, what was it called? I think The Crowded Room. The Crowded Room. I have not seen this, but it's kind of a murder mystery. And she's doing that. So what what's her career going to be like now that she's almost 38 years old i don't know i think she's going to continue to do small roles she does have a comedy coming out next year and it's great to see rom-coms and comedies uh that are going to be released in the theaters because you just don't see them uh, no hard feelings by jennifer lawrence came out in the summer that was kind of like the resurrection of the r-rated comedy it didn't do that well but she's doing my ex-friend's wedding where it's a woman's about to get married and she leaves a drunken voicemail to her four old friends saying she doesn't want to get married and so they try to stop the wedding. And I don't know who she plays in this movie, but as a whole, I think Seyfried has aged into being a better actress, which is great. But in terms of her looks, she is in her 30s. She's still quite lovely, don't get me wrong. She's had two children and she's kept her weight down. You know, when you're 5'2", you, don't, you have less room to keep your weight down. Unlike Blake Lively, who's a future Sexy Saturday is quite tall. Uh, I think her acting talent is great. I, to me, just her peak beauty was maybe about uh, in, the, in the late aught, early teens when she was in like Letters to Juliet and Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia too. she had just given birth and her, her face is a little too tan in that movie. But I just think she's an ethereal cherubic beauty. Guys, post in the comments. I'd love to hear from you what your take on Amanda Seyfried. Until next time, take care. God bless. Hit the notification, subscribe, and share. Until next time, bye.